Greetings. It's good to be here with y'all. It's been a long time since I've been on online with y'all. But I felt like I really needed to share this. I laid down for a nap yesterday afternoon and when I was wake while I was waking up, as I was waking up, it was either something that I had been dreaming about or something that all of a sudden came on my heart. And that was that I needed to um, to fill you in on some things, all of our followers and anyone who hears this, that, um, that it's very important that we obey God. When we hear from God and um, we know that it's something he said he wants us to do, then we need to do it. And I'll begin by saying in late November of 2022, we got a call from a very good friend of ours, Woody Woodward up in Oregon, and he had a word, and may, mostly he had a word for me. He had a word for Kent too, but the main word was for me. And basically he said the bottom line was that I needed to begin to document the things that, uh, that we've walked through, the things that I know, um, the Bible that I know, just a lot, of, a lot of things like that. And I really took it to heart. This was uh, right before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving came, and right after Thanksgiving, we started into decorating here for Christmas, and I felt like I had gotten pneumonia. I got to a place where I could hardly breathe. Went to urgent care, and they took x-rays and said, yeah, it's probably pneumonia. We see something on the x-rays. So they gave me antibiotics, and I started taking the antibiotics, and it didn't even... It didn't even make a dent in um, in my issue, and so I told Kent, I said, I think that um, I, I think that I'm very, I just got distracted. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> I think that this is not pneumonia. This must be something else. So we went to our regular doctor, my regular doctor. And um, she didn't. She didn't come out to see me. She sent two of her nurse practitioners. So they're looking at the X-rays and they go, "Yeah, um, yeah, it looks like it might be pneumonia." But why don't we send you over to the hospital for a CAT scan? I had never had one before, so we went over. By now, it was getting to be really late in the day. Uh, I did. They did a CT scan and um, never got back to us about it. When they finally did, I was to the place where I could hardly breathe. And so they said, go to the emergency room. And so I wound up in the hospital for a week doing a lot of testing to determine whether or not I, or what was wrong with me. So they did a lot of tests. And at the end of that week, it was close to Christmas. And so they said, well, we don't really know anything yet. Uh, and there's nothing more we can do for you here in the hospital. We're just going to go ahead and send you home. While I was in the hospital, though, they did a thoracentesis, which is where they, they put a catheter or a tube into your lung cavity, not into the lung itself, but into the cavity, and they drained off all the fluid. There was fluid all around my lungs, and they got almost 3 liters, 2.8 liters of fluid, which alleviated a, a big part of my problem at that time. But it started happening again all through the Christmas season. I could feel myself. I could feel my stomach getting distended in, in this area and uh, to the place where I couldn't, I couldn't put uh, my clothes on. I had to wear sweats. So I finally d determined that I had cancer and um, how we were going to proceed with that. The reason why I bring this up is... The word that we had gotten from Woody, that I needed to obey God in putting this all together. And I realized at that point that this was really an attack on me. It was an, an attack on my person, an attack on my health. It came out of nowhere, really out of the blue. The, the, what they call it is ascites, and it's a, an offshoot of cancer. Cancer develops, you know, this, uh, this, uh, fluid that that builds up in your in your system or in your cavities 
And I made the determination that uh, we were going to go ahead and, and do the chemotherapy and everything, uh, do what the doctors wanted us to do. And I prayed. I felt like that's what God wanted us to do. In our experience with being in the hospital in December, we ministered to a lot of people and figured that's what we're going to do. We're going to believe God for the best. And I know that my family would be able to handle that. Because it came on so quickly, I really wanted to just have God supernaturally heal me. I, I totally have faith for that. But, um, but I felt like this was the direction God wanted me to go. And so we did. So right after um, I started chemo, I said, well, let's, let's do this prophetic history. Let's get this on, you know, on tape and get it recorded. And we decided to go live every Tuesday at 4 o'clock with, with a testimony. And I started from the very beginning and uh, but I but going back to to this condition to getting this cancer and everything coming on me all of a sudden after that phone call from from Woody was that I, I really felt like this was a supernatural attack from the enemy that he was really trying to silence my voice because of what Woody said and the impact that I felt like it would have on people. Just our testimony alone, the testimony of our life, the impact that it would have on people, I felt like this was really an attack from the enemy. So the next time I experienced uh, something like this <clears throat> was in June. We had gotten a call from our friend Charlie LeBlanc and Charlie told Kent that Larry, who was the best man in our wedding, you know, had a lot of issues, and he was, um, he had a lot of heart issues and things going on with him. We had heard about it earlier, but didn't know that he was on death's door, is, you know, what they, they called it. And uh, so he said, can you go over and minister to him? Well, after that call, I had three dreams. I had the same dream three nights in a row that we went over to Larry's house and that we took him into the courts of heaven and you know, shared with him or walked through with him exactly what the dream, what the dream was. And we did that. That was in the middle of June. That was on a Saturday. On Monday, I was back in the hospital with, an, with abscess, infected abscess um, in my abdomen. And so it was, it was scary to them because they didn't want me to go septic. And, um, so anyway, the interesting thing is I fully expected that. I, I don't know why I expected it. I don't know if, if God was warning me, you know, yes, obey me. The devil's not going to like it. He's going to come against you again with full force to try to knock you out because this is operating, this is the kingdom of God in operation. And the kingdom of darkness does not want the kingdom of God in operation. So I got over that. But the one thing that I wanted to share with you uh, that's come up recently is about a month, a little over a month ago, we were down at, at Gateway House of Prayer and Harry Schrader was, had talked to Kent and he came out, he was talking to Kent about they were going to be doing a 40-year celebration at uh, for Southgate, which w was originally Victory Fellowship. And Victory Fellowship was the church that we, that we founded um, when we went down from Grace 40-some-odd years ago. And the whole thing was extremely miraculous. Everything that happened in those years and how God provided for that congregation and everything like that. And I asked him, I said, oh, I have very vivid memories of, of all of this, Harry. And really, Southgate needs to hear this because you've got a lot of young people now that didn't walk through this. And, the, and a lot of the older people are, are, are going by the wayside. You know, they're, they're passing away and, they're, and you just don't know. They just don't know. They don't know what we know. So let me come and share my story. And so we set it up to, um, to go down there on Palm Sunday and to uh, share with the congregation the story of how that church came into being. I also knew 
that this was the voice of the Lord. I had dreams about that as well, about what to share. If you get a chance, go to Southgate St. Louis and watch the video from, from it's called 40th Year Celebration, and, um, and just hear the tremendous, incredible story of the miracles that God did to get that church there. And I felt like that was very important. I felt like it was very important for that congregation, for us, for, um, for launching forward into what God has for the churches these days. But it didn't come without cost for me in obeying God. Shortly before we went down there, I felt like I felt like I would, my my stomach was my midsection was was getting distended again, and um, so we went on Sunday, and on Wednesday, the Wednesday after that Sunday, I wound up in the hospital, in the emergency room, and um, they said the ascites were it was ascites that was causing the issue which sent red flags up you know, with, because I had gone through all my chemo, spent the whole year of 2023, you know, fighting this, doing everything. I went through eight rounds of chemotherapy, had a six and a half hour surgery, felt like we were really on the other side of it so much that I had my port taken out. And, uh, and so this was very disconcerting, you know, that here now I have ascites that are building up again in my system. And my doctor was on vacation, and so um, when he we, they gave me a paracentesis, and uh, when I was in the hospital, and that paracentesis yielded six liters of fluid, and uh, so I scheduled with Doctor uh, Selassie, my OB or um, on oncological oncological gynecologist and he said to be on the safe side since I chose not to do anything you know as far as after after treatment you know immunotherapy or anything like that we just kind of developed a wait and see attitude he said well let's start you back on chemotherapy and we'll do three rounds in a different form so I'm here to tell you that I'm on, on chemotherapy again and really love to have your prayers. But the important thing in all of these is that God was wanting to do something and he was wanting to use me to do it. And I am not afraid to do anything God tells me to do. And I never have. I mean, if you go back and you watch the history that we told, that we talked about for 40 episodes, I, I'm not afraid. If God says it, you know, he'll do it. Whether we have any guarantees, we have no guarantees. But the, there is a price sometimes that you pay because the kingdom of darkness knows what you're doing too. And they don't want this to happen because too many people will be affected towards God, towards the kingdom of God, and in faith. Testimony like this causes people's faith to grow and expand. And so I really felt like when I woke up from my, from my nap yesterday that I needed to share this with you all and let you know, you know where things are at. I know you all haven't seen me in a while, and many are probably wondering, well, what's going on with Carla? Well, after I had my port taken out, we had a wonderful vacation. We had a wonderful Thanksgiving. We had a wonderful Christmas season. I felt I, I felt like I was I was detoxing and doing better, uh, aching a lot. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, here comes the society's thing again. So I want y'all to pray with me. We're going to do the three rounds of chemotherapy, and I've completely changed my diet now, uh, understanding that there are certain things that we can do holistically you know, to help ourselves. And um, my doctor says, do whatever you can because they're really for me. And I'm not sickly. I'm not weak. Everybody says, I look great. So um, that's where it's at. I want to pray for you all. We will be, keep praying for you all that you would have the courage and the conviction to... Um, 
to do what God tells you to do. And don't be afraid because God is still on the throne and Jesus is still the highest authority in the, in, in the universe. And that you determine that you will satisfy your days here on earth and you will fulfill your destiny, that you will do it. And I also encourage some of you to go back and look, at, look into your heritage. Look into, you know, especially if you're from a Christian heritage, see where that goes. Ask God what that means. Ask God what part of a legacy am I? And, uh, and then go there and follow after it with all your heart. Jump into the kingdom of God with both feet. God needs us to do that right now more than anything because the kingdom of darkness hates this, literally hates this, trying to stamp us out trying to shut up our voice, but we have to say no. And in the name of Jesus, I will not. So Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone that hears this. I pray that you would give them courage, that you would give them words, God, and instruction on what they're to do in the marketplace, in all seven arenas of the seven mountains, in anywhere that you have your people, God, where you've placed your children, that are to be your voice and your hands and your feet. Give them a boldness to, to, to just follow you, to follow your spirit. Your spirit knows everything. You know everything. You're omnipotent, God. You know everything that's going on with everybody around us. So give us uh, the gifts of the spirit. Let them flow. Let them flow. Let there be discernment, God. Let there be a hearing of your voice. When they pass that person in the aisle at the supermarket who's considering suicide and the Holy Spirit arrests them, give them the boldness, God, to go and to witness and to pray and to do that in every area of their life, wherever they are, and especially in the home, that the fathers and the mothers would really begin to take the Word of God and make that the center of their home and, and to raise their children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord God. Jesus wants to come and he wants to come soon. And so right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for everyone that hears this, be bold, be strong, take courage, and don't be afraid.